Broncos country, what's going on? Hope you guys are having a wonderful Sunday. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Let's go ahead and get into it. Should the Broncos go ahead and make a move for the future and acquire T. Higgins? Y'all let me know your thoughts in the comments on this. I'm going to break this down with what a proposed contract would look like for T. Higgins. And then we can get into the discussion about what it would look like in terms of trade compensation to acquire somebody like him in your opinion or in my opinion and see if you guys would do this or not so let's go ahead and get started this is a uh, courtesy of andre perota i believe is how you pronounce his name over on twitter and the all bangles website with fan nation he said here's a t higgins contract projection so something around this four years 95 million dollars overall that is an average annual value of $23.75 million. I don't think that's crazy at all. I think that's pretty reasonable for what wide receivers are going for and what his production has been. This would be $40 million fully guaranteed, $57.5 million in total guarantees. Maybe you guys can explain to me what the difference is between that but or like some of that guaranteed money, I guess, is coming later past the sign so cap hit this is what would be really interesting is with him playing on the franchise uh, tag i think you're able to kind of spread out the cap hit a little bit 9.52 uh, 9.25 million the first year then 20.25 then the last two years of the contract a whopping 32.75 million dollar cap hit again, for the final two seasons, but the cash that you're paying is going down, which is nice. Now, with Bo Nix having to play 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027 on his rookie deal, and then the fifth-year option in 2028, uh, there is a great possibility that we would have plenty of room for a large cap hit like that, especially with Russell Wilson's deal coming off the books uh, after the 2025 season so this is something where uh, i kind of like this you know you would have marvin mims uh, his rookie deal would expire towards the end of this if you want to keep him maybe you're devoting a little bit more salary to the wide receiver pool than you'd want who knows uh, that depends a lot on how he performs over the next few years of course and then john or, or not john franklin troy franklin he, his contract would be expiring at that 2027 at the end of that season as well. So there would be some financial considerations towards the end of this deal, but I don't think that this is outrageous at all. I think uh, T. Higgins, I think he's a good receiver, a very solid uh, number two wide receiver for the Bengals, and I think he could be a number one wide receiver on another team, kind of similar to what we've seen with uh, Stephon Diggs when uh, he went – over from the Minnesota Vikings to the Bills, definitely became more of that number one option with Minnesota deciding to keep Adam Thielen and make him their number one guy uh, for, for a long time. But I feel like, hey, if the draft compensation, that's probably what we need to consider here. I imagine the Bengals would probably want more than a third round pick or something like that. But hey, Cortland Sutton in a third round pick, maybe they would do that for kind of a shorter term, a cheaper wide receiver too. I know they did just uh, trade or draft uh, Jermaine Burton out of the University of Alabama. So that's that's what can kind of make things a little bit tricky. Like I feel like the Broncos can do this from a cap perspective and I'm fine with a contract like this, but I'm not really sure how you make it, how, how you find the right trade compensation for the Bengals if Cortland Sutton isn't involved. That's what the tricky thing is. Uh, so probably not very realistic, but if we had the opportunity to do it without giving up like a second round pick, would I do a second round pick for T. Higgins? That's interesting to think about. But right now it's like, man, we've traded so many of our draft picks in the past. I don't know if I want to do that. Um, Let's continue to draft and develop, draft and develop. But here in 2023, T. Higgins is coming off of a lackluster season, which is probably why this contract negotiation has been a little bit more difficult. You see, uh, you know, only 42 receptions, had some injuries, 12 games played, still averaged uh, what was a career high. 
15.6 yards per reception, still five touchdowns in that limited playing time. So uh, definitely a big time uh, red zone target, 6'4", 219 pounds, out of Clemson, tons of speed. I would love for us to kind of kick the tires around what would be the price because, again, I don't think the Bengals are going to get as much as they would want because a contract extension is tied to a trade whenever you're bringing this guy in. So I don't think you, uh, you know, you have to give up a first round pick for him like you saw with AJ Brown or anything like that. But I would love for the Broncos to at least make some calls to the Bengals, figure out what the range is uh, for him to acquire him. And if it's a little bit cheaper than a day two pick, <laughs> probably not though. They probably want a day two pick. Would you do it for a day two pick? Ah, I am on the fence about that one. So y'all let me know what you think in the comments here. T. Higgins. Oh, that would be exciting. And it would be a wonderful security blanket for Bo Nix to develop with. Oh, man. Screw it. Give him the second round pick. That's what I decided. I think I would trade a second round pick for T. Higgins. So am I crazy? Y'all let me know in the comments. Smash that like and subscribe on the way out. I'll be back tomorrow. And as always, y'all, go Broncos.